Hey guys, good morning. Well, it's morning for me. It's a pretty rainy day today. I have no makeup on. I'm hanging out in the house. It's Sunday. I want to do a good old fashioned declutter video. It is absolutely time for me to go through some of this stuff. A lot of these products just aren't getting any love. And I know that some of them are getting on the older side. I did just recently do a declutter video for all of my lip products. So I'll link that up in the cards, but also it's in my declutter playlist, so check that out if you're interested. So I don't think we'll do the lipsticks or lip products today. And I think I'm gonna do foundations a little bit differently and in a separate video, but I need to do everything else. Eyeshadows, I don't think I have as much to declutter because those tend to last a little bit longer, but there are some that I know that I need to get rid of, but I thought we would just go through it all anyway. And I can just show you all of the products like pretty briefly, not in a whole lot of detail, but just so that you see the whole collection. So I'm gonna turn the camera around now and kind of show you what we're working with. So here is my filming setup. Here is where I store all of my makeup. The stuff on the floor here is stuff that, this is a box of stuff that I haven't tried yet. I want to do like a luxury haul video from some of the stuff that I picked up from Neiman Marcus and there is more stuff coming. This is all stuff that I've tried like at least once but I'm still testing and then this is a box of like items that I have tested that's going to go in the next speed reviews video. So that's kind of that on the floor. I've got my makeup wipes ready for the declutter. This is my setup here. This on the vanity is like everything that I'm currently using in my everyday, like right now, everyday makeup and still testing a lot of these products. Like I've only used them a couple of times, but I do test everything like five or six times before I actually put it away in my drawers. And so all of this stuff is stuff that I'm still working on. It's just a mix of different things. I mean, there's everything in here, including lip products, eyeshadows, blushes. Not everything in here is like new releases. Some of them are, and some of them just are new to me. So I am testing them out. So they are staying there until I'm done. It's pretty pared down. Everything in there is fairly new. I try and move it into that box on the floor that is all the stuff that I've already tested that's gonna go into like a speed reviews video. I do keep the bigger palettes of eyeshadows that I'm still working on up here that like I've only tried like one or maybe two times, but I like to use them at least five times before I put them away. So those are up there. But the drawers is really what I want to go through because a lot of this stuff I've had for a little bit and some of it is getting old, some of it I don't use, and it's just time. So I think I'm going to start from how I would normally apply it and then I'm going to pull out all of my primers and we will set up on the floor. Okay, here is everything from the primer section. I do have a toner here from Murad. I got this in a boxy charm. I think it's nice. Like for hydration. I don't use it as like a toner in my skincare routine. I just kind of use it like if I'm skipping primer, I'll use this just to give my face like an extra boost of moisture after I put on my sunscreen. So I like this and it's not that old. So I'm going to hold on to this. I'm going to pull out some of the stuff that I definitely know that I'm keeping because it's on the newer side. Um, this is one from the Sephora collection. This is the Hydrate Base Primer, and it's okay. Like, it's it feels nice and hydrating. It's a pretty lightweight formula. There's not, um, if you can see, it's really, really lightweight. It's almost like a, a gel texture. It's not like a moisturizer consistency, but I do think it's nice, and because it's so lightweight, it works under makeup pretty well. So I'm going to hold on to this as well. These two products in the back were in the vanity, but I wanted to pull every primer out that I had just so that I kind of showed you. But this is the L'Oreal Lumi Glotion. I kind of say this is relatively similar to the Say Do, which is technically a highlighter, but I use it as like a glowy base. I had to unzoom the camera because it wasn't focusing, so you're a little bit farther out now. But I say that these are relatively similar in the kind of finish that they give. I actually think this is a little bit more glowy. The Say, the Glowy Super Gel, and this one is in the shade Star Glow. And I think this one's a little bit more shimmery. It's a little bit more glowy than this, but this is a nice kind of inexpensive alternative and you get a ton more product because this is just the mini. So this is new to me. I'm still testing this out, but I do like it. I really like the Say and I use it as a glowy base, like I said, so I'm definitely holding on to that one. I do have the Becca Under Eye Corrector. This is, you know, nearing like a little bit old. I know that they still sell this with Smashbox, but I did buy it with Becca and I smelled it and it still smells okay. I'm, I'm gonna hold on to this 
for a little while longer and see if I can continue to use it. But I think it's like the next declutter, it's just gotta go because it is getting on the older side. This Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. Uh, I really like this product. Um, I'm nearly done with it, so I need to continue using it up and then I will get rid of it. I don't know if I'll replace it because I just have so many others that it just, you know, I don't use primers that much. So, um, but I really do like this product. I like moisturizers under my foundation a lot of times instead of or in lieu of primers. This one's a good one for me. I did pull this out, but didn't show it. This is the Wet n Wild Primer Serum. It's supposed to like brighten and hydrate. It's another one that has like a gel consistency and it was the other one that's sitting on my vanity and I'm still testing it. Like I think it's okay. And I think that it's hydrating. It's just very, very lightweight, very watery formula. I don't know that it does a lot under my makeup, but again, I am still testing this out because it's new. So I'm gonna hold on to it. The NYX Angel Veil, I really like this. Like, is a smoothing primer. I call it the Skin Perfecting Primer, and I think that it's one of my few primers that actually does, like, blur. I just think that it, like, actually kind of, like, blurs out some of your pores. So I do like this one. I'm going to hold on to this one. This one from Becca is the Anti-Fatigue Under Eye Primer, and it's as old or a little bit older than the corrector is. And I think it's just like, I mean, it's still sticky, but because you put it so close to your eyes and it's older and it's a cream product, like I don't want to keep this. So this one I'm definitely going to declutter. And this Becca, what do they call this? Skin Love Brighten and Blur Primer. I didn't find this extremely impactful and it's on the older side. Obviously you can't get this anymore. This was a tiny little mini. I didn't work through it and Becca's gone, so. This one from Laneige is the Glowy Makeup Serum. I like this. It's another one that's like a little bit of a gel formula, and it's pretty. I don't know that it does a whole lot under my makeup, but I think I like the texture and the consistency. Again, don't know that it does a whole lot, but it is just a mini or a travel size, and so I'm gonna try and work through the rest of this, so keeping that one. As far as like the tacky primers, I have one from Milk Makeup, Hydro Grip Primer, and then the other one that I have that is very similar from the drugstore is the Sheer Envy Hydrating Primer. I think I've had the hard candy one for about a month now. So they're very similar in consistencies. The hard candy one is a little bit more color to it, but they're both sticky, tacky primers. They both do the same thing. I don't love tacky primers, but for someone who doesn't love it, I feel like I've gone through a good amount of this product. Um, to be honest, I'm probably just going to keep both of them to now kind of compare the two and see which one I want to keep because I haven't used this Hydro Grip one in a little bit. So I'll test this one and then one of them will stay and then one of them will go. But for now, I'm just going to keep both. Okay, one I know that I'm definitely going to get rid of. It's a color neutralizer from CoverGirl, but honestly, I get really, really red skin. And so like the, pr the concept of this product is nice. Like if it actually worked for me, it would be great. But I just don't feel like this neutralizes my redness. I don't feel like it does a good enough job, honestly. Like I'll put it on and I won't see a huge difference. And when I'm looking for something that's really gonna cover my redness, like it has to make a huge difference. And I just don't think that this product does. And because it's a little bit older, I am gonna get rid of it. Next, I have one from Glossier that's about two months old. It's the Priming Moisturizer. This one just feels like a regular lotion. It's quite nice. It's quite hydrating. I think that it's a really thin formula and it sits under makeup really nicely. So this feels really good on the skin. So I'm going to hold on to this one as well. I have two more here from Becca that are older. This one's the Backlight Priming Filter. And I think that it's very similar in consistency to the like the L'Oreal Lumi Glotion. It's just a very glowy base. It's really pretty and I really liked it. It's just on the older side. So I don't want to keep this in my collection anymore, plus Becca is gone, so time to go. Here's another one from Becca. This is the Light Shifter Doing Tint. Technically, this was a skin tint, but for me, it just wasn't dark enough to be a skin tint, so I was using it as a glowy base, and I really liked it for that. It just provided like a teeny tiny bit of tint to my skin, but not too much. But it's again, just a product you can't get your hands on anymore. It's a shame, I really liked this. I think this was like one of the final launches that she had before um, they closed, so this one has to go as well. 
Another one that I know is going to go is the MAC Natural Radiance Base. I think that it's like a fairly luminous product, but it's also very hydrating. Like there was nothing wrong with this. I really liked it. I think it's a thin formula and I think it sat under my makeup nicely. I just don't know that it did anything. Like it wasn't blurring. It was just kind of like an extra step. It was just kind of an extra boost of hydration. And so it was nice, but it's definitely on the older side. So I'm going to declutter this one as well. Next, uh, Rare Beauty. This one was the blurring primer, the pore diffusing primer. I love this. This is one of the few primers that I think does such a good job with like diffusing my pores and actually like filling them in and really like doing something underneath my makeup. So I'm a huge fan of this. If you are somebody that has a lot of pores, I think this is like, like number one blurring or pore filling primer. I love this and I would not get rid of this. If I ran out or it got old, I would repurchase this one. Another one from Rare Beauty is the Always an Optimist Primer. I think this one is also, again, just like one of those glowy bases. It's really nice. I think Rare Beauty does a really good job on her primers. I mean, the two that she has in her line. I just think this one is really beautiful. Holding on to this one as well, really like this for a glowy base. I have one here from Tula. This is the Filter Primer. It's supposed to be blurring and moisturizing. I actually found that this pilled up on my skin. And it looks like it's been used a lot, but I've only used it two times. And I don't know if it was because of the moisturizer that I had on underneath that was causing this to pill, but I really didn't like it. And it's such a shame because I really like Tula products and this is expensive. And I think I've heard really good things about it and that's why I wanted to pick it up, but I was just really disappointed. This is one that I wanna keep around just so that I can try maybe applying without like a moisturizer or maybe using a different one or just over sunscreen or something like that because I want this to work for me. It just didn't. So I can't say whether or not this is a good or bad product. It may just have been my experience the two times that I used it. But anyway, I'm going to keep this one for now. Then I have one here from um, First Aid Beauty. This is the Coconut Skin Smoothie Primer Moisturizer. Long name. I think this is really hydrating. It's just one of those that is really good for like sensitive skin. It doesn't cause me to get extra red. It doesn't do anything additional outside of like giving me an extra boost of moisture, but like sometimes that's just what I want on drier days. So I like this one, I'm gonna keep it. I have one here from e.l.f. It's the hydrating face primer. I like it, I don't think it's bad, but I don't think that it's better than the First Aid Beauty one, for example. And I don't think it's better than the Glossier. So I don't think I'm gonna keep this one. I really like e.l.f. products, but this is just, but I'm trying to pair down my collection a little bit more to stuff I use all the time. And this is just not one that I think of reaching for because like I said, I'll grab the other two over this one. So I'm gonna declutter this. I have one from Milani. It's the Skin Quench Hydrating Primer. I like this one. This is again, very similar to the consistency of these two in that they're just like a really moisturizing formula. They look like, you know, applying an extra layer of skincare or moisturizer on the skin, but this one is actually a little bit thicker than both of these in terms of consistency. So I would say this is like a really, really good like drugstore hydrating primer. So I'm gonna hold on to that one and it's fairly new to me. The next one that I have is the Wet n Wild Impossible Primer. This is like a blurring primer. It's silicone free, but it's like silicone like. It just has that very silicone-y texture to it. And I thought it would be similar, like the drugstore equivalent to like the Rare Beauty one, that it would like diffuse some of my pores. I just don't think this works as well as the Rare Beauty one. And I don't always reach for a pore diffusing primer. So I think that I don't really need to keep this in my collection because I have the Rare Beauty one and I would prefer to use that one over this one if I'm looking to diffuse my pores. So I'm gonna declutter that one. This one here from Hourglass is the number 28 primer serum. This is a pretty expensive primer and I would say that it's very similar in terms of like what it does to the Milk Makeup one and the Hard Candy one and that it's like a gripping primer. It has a pretty strong scent to it and I would say this is almost a stickier formula than both the Hard Candy and the Milk Makeup. I wanna keep this because it's more expensive and I'd like to get more use out of it than I have. And so I'm not ready to declutter it yet, but I, it's just not something I reach for all the time. I go for something more hydrating usually, but if you're into sticky primers and haven't tried this one from Hourglass, this one's so strong. Like this is a super, super sticky formula. So, but I'm gonna hold on to it for now. 
The next one that I have here is from Georgette Klinger. It's the Marula Primer. I actually really like this. I don't think that I want to keep it because I just have too much going on. And it's not like this came in a boxy charm, but it's really like gel like consistency. It felt really good, like and cooling going onto the skin. Other than that, it's not like a blurring primer. It's not a pore diffusing primer. It just felt nice to go on the skin, but I have others that do this. I just don't want to hold on to too many. I can't use that much. You know, you only use a dab when you're using primer. So having like this many just means that something has to give. So this one's going to go. Here's another one I know that I can get rid of. This is the Maybelline Baby Skin. I believe this is a silicone based primer, but it's old. Like I've had this at least three years now. I never think to reach for it. So because it's old and I think that I have other ones that do similar things and I like more, I'm going to get rid of this. Next one I have is from Tatcha. It's the Silk Canvas Primer. Maybe this is going to be unpopular opinion, but honestly, I don't think this is a better primer or an especially exceptional primer over some of the other ones that I have in my collection. And this was fairly expensive. This is just the mini, but I have like attempted to use most of this. And so there's barely any product left in it. So I want to try and use this up, but I, it's not something that I would repurchase because I just think there are other ones that are more hydrating that, that do better things. I just don't know that I see this making that much of a difference for me. Another one that I'm going to get rid of is the one from Fenty Beauty. This is the Soft Silk Hydrating Primer. I've had this for quite a while. I don't think it's a bad product. It's just, again, one of those that I kind of felt like didn't do a whole lot under my skin. I know that it's just meant to be hydrating, but I find some of the other ones to be more hydrating. And because this is just on the older side, honestly, it's just time to let this go. The next one I have is from NYX. It's the Marshmallow Primer. Not getting rid of this. I actually really like this. I think that the gimmickiness of it, I don't know, doesn't dissuade me. I love the smell. I think that it's like hydrating, well whipped. I think it actually like sits under your makeup really nicely. I'm just a fan of this. I know that a lot of people were like, meh, it's not, you know, it doesn't really do much. It's a very gimmicky product, but I quite like it. So I'm going to hold on to this. The next one that I have is the Urban Decay All Nighter Face Primer. I think this is probably about two years old now. This is just one that I can't remember exactly how it works because I haven't used it in so long. So it's one that I need to pull back out and give a little bit more love before I finally get rid of it. So I think I'm going to hold on to this one for now. And then I'm definitely going to hold on to the Smashbox Photo Focus Primerizer. They don't even sell this anymore. And this has like just a little bit left. This is one that's like really lightweight, really hydrating on the skin. I think sits beautifully under makeup. I'm a huge fan of this. I have not tried the new reformulation, but I don't think I'm going to. Like, I just like this so much. I'm surprised that they, I think a lot of people like this. So I'm surprised they took that out of their line. All right, so let's put all of these back and then we will put them back in the drawer together. Okay, so I'm just going to put some of the stuff back up here that I was still working on. And then we'll put these little guys here. Okay, let's move on into, let's just do setting sprays since those are next in the drawer. Okay, here are all the setting sprays. I don't have that many but I don't always use them. So it's a little silly to keep all of these. This one from Morphe, the Continuous Setting Mist, it's nearly empty. Like every time I spray it, I still can't seem to get stuff out of it. So I'm trying to work through it. I wouldn't say this is the most powerful setting spray, but I think it's okay. I definitely like the mister. I'm almost done with it. So I'm trying to use it up. I'm on a mission. So I'm going to hold on to this one. This one from Benefit is the Professional Super Setter. I think this one is a really sticky setting spray. I think it does a really good job setting your makeup. So I'm going to hold on to this one and it's fairly new to me. A drugstore alternative that I think is pretty similar to the Professional is the Milani Make It Last. This one is more dewy, I think, than the Benefit one, but I do like it and it's fairly new. So I'm going to hold on to that one. This is a new one from the Sephora collection. It's the Makeup Setting Spray. This one is supposed to be sweat and humidity resistant. So here in Florida, I do really like that. 
I'm going to hold on to it for that reason. I don't know how well it works just yet because I've only used it twice, but I'm going to keep testing it. So holding on to this one. I have one from Maven, which is the rose water setting spray. I don't know that I find this actually does anything. And I have one really similar from Wet n Wild. I think this one is more of a setting spray than this one is, but I just don't grab for this one. I think that I've been using it to like, like wet my sponges and that's about it. So I'm going to declutter this one and then hold on to the Wet n Wild one because I just got this. I have just a tiny bit left of the Milk Makeup Hydro setting spray. And again, it's another one that I'm on a mission to finish. I think this one does a pretty decent job. I think it's similar to the Professional, but the sprayers are very different. I have one from Illamasqua. It's a Hydra setting spray, but I have other ones that I think are hydrating and I just don't reach for this one. I like the Pixi Makeup Fixing Mist for hydration more than I like this one. So I'm going to declutter this one. I have two here from Charlotte Tilbury. They are both just minis. I have crap for both, so I've used a little bit of both of these, but they came in a two pack. This is like, this is awesome. This is such a good setting spray. I'd say probably the best one that I have in my collection, so I'm gonna hold on to these. And then I have the Dewy Setting Mist from e.l.f. Mm, I don't like to be dewy. Like if I'm setting, I don't know. I think the Milani is kind of dewy. I just don't like this texture. I think this is an older product, so I don't even think they sell this anymore. Or maybe just not in this packaging. I'm not really sure, but I think that's the case. Correct me if I'm wrong, feel free, but I'm not gonna hold on to this one. One of my favorite drugstore fixing mists, or just like give me a boost of hydration, is this one for Pixie. The sprayer is atrocious, but otherwise this is such a good one. I've used quite a bit of it and I would definitely repurchase this product. I like that. And the final one I have is the Urban Decay All Nighter. It's an OG setting spray. I have had this in my collection a little bit, but I am still using it and it's almost gone. So I, I wanna continue to use this up. Okay, these can all go back into the drawer. That's about as pretty as it's gonna get. Let's move on into concealers. I have too many foundations. Like obviously one face once a day. This is just crazy. But I wanna save the foundations for a different video because I have even more than this. Like I have some up on the vanity, some in the boxes over there. I just wanna do the foundations a little bit differently, but let's take out the concealers and go through those. I'm a little scared to zoom in because of the focus of the camera. So I don't think I'm going to, this is just the little tiny pile of concealers that I have, but I'm pretty sure I know which ones that I do not want to keep and the ones that I absolutely love. I think we'll go over the potted ones first. Um, the Glossier one is a good potted concealer, but it's very, very light coverage. So it's good for like minimal touch-ups under the eyes. It's not really good for spot concealing for me. The one that is really good for spot concealing is the Too Faced Sweet Peach um concealer i love this it's a thicker formula but it never creases on me so this is a good one and it's going to stay i am not the biggest fan of the rem beauty sweetener concealer it's okay but i think this one does crease like i think it's thicker than the Too faced and i think the Too faced just like gives more coverage than the rem beauty one does so it's not my favorite but it's very new to my collection i've only used this two or three times so i'm not ready to part with this just yet so I'm gonna hold on to that one. The last potted concealer that I have is from RMS Beauty. This is another one that like performs like the Too Faced. It's good for under the eyes. It's good for spot concealing. It doesn't crease. I think these are my two favorite like potted concealers. So I'm gonna hold on to that one. I have the new release, the Super Stay from Maybelline. This is the Active Wear one. I like this because of the really like thin, applicator and i like to clean up my eyeshadow with it this one is actually in too light of a shade so i don't love it for spot concealing and i don't love it under the eyes because i think it's just too thick and it creases on me but because of the wand i use it for cleaning up eyeshadow so i'm going to keep it for that reason full coverage concealer that i do really love is the conceal the deal from lawless I don't find that this creases under my eyes. This is like one of my like holy grail full coverage concealers. Another one that is, is a new one to me, which is the Catrice True Skin Concealer. I think both of these are really, really good like full coverage concealers that don't crease on my super dry skin. So I love both of these. I'm gonna keep these. This one that I have here from Maybelline, the Instant Age Rewind Eraser. I really like this product. I think it's a good like medium but lightweight concealer. It's just old. And anything that gets like really close to the eyes that's liquid, I don't wanna keep that long. So this is something that I'm just gonna throw away. 
I don't know if I'll repurchase it because I just have too many concealers and you know you concealers are hard to get through so for right now I'm gonna let this go it's time one of my favorite like holy grail high-end concealers is the Dior Skin Correct. I love this. Like this is one of my favorite concealers in my entire collection. It's just hydrating. It does medium like coverage under the eyes. It's great for spot concealing. It's just a really long lasting formula. I used about half of it. I, I love this. Like this is a great, great concealer. Definitely keeping this. There's two stick concealers that I just think are time to go. This is the Accomplice Concealer from Marc Jacobs and I loved this formula. It's such a lightweight like stick concealer and it did a really good job. It's just old at this point and you can't get this anymore because Marc Jacobs Beauty isn't a thing so goodbye. And then the one from Wet n Wild is another one of those stick concealers that's super hydrating, not drying. Just like the Marc Jacobs one, it's just old so it's gotta go. The ones I know that I'm gonna keep, I actually like this. <laughs> the Best Skin Ever Concealer from Sephora, their new launch. I think that it's a heavier formula, but it's medium to full coverage. I think that if you go in with a light hand, because a lot goes a long way with this concealer, it's actually quite nice. What I do find with this is that it runs a little bit yellow in their line. You do have to like be careful which shade you get, but I like this. I, I was a fan of it, so I'm gonna hold on to this one. Two more that I'm definitely gonna hold on to is the new Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Radiant Concealer. I thought this was radiant, but not too radiant. And I thought it provided a good amount of coverage. I actually liked this, so I'm keeping it. The Milk Makeup one, I got this in a shade that's a little bit too dark, but it seems to work for me just fine. This is the new like Future Fluid Concealer. I think it's like a great consistency, a good formula. Like it's just medium weight, it's not too heavy. I think it has a medium amount of coverage. And I don't think it creases under my eyes. So I like this one. I'm going to keep this. One that I am going to declutter from Milk is the Sunshine Under Eye Tint and Brightener. I just didn't love this. I don't like the applicator, the ball on it. But besides that, I just didn't think that it did like a lot. Like I didn't think it brightened my under eyes. It wasn't an overly good concealer. Like it was light coverage. And because I just have so many that I would reach for over this one, I'm just going to get rid of this one. Another one that's relatively new is the Wet n Wild Mega Last Incognito. I think this is a good medium coverage concealer. It's supposed to be an all day full coverage concealer, but I don't think it's full coverage. I think it's medium, but it doesn't crease under my eyes. It's a nice lightweight formula. So when I want something that's like medium weight, I will reach for this. So I, I like this one. I'm going to keep this. There's two here that I see that are going to go. This Tarte Ultra Creamy was too light of a shade. It's on the older side at this point and I think it creased. So I'm just over like full coverage spackle under my eyes that creases. I think that I have other ones now in my collection like the Catrice that doesn't. I think the Lawless doesn't. So it's time to let this one go. Another one I'm letting go is from Fenty Beauty. This is the Bright Fix Under Eye Brightener. Um, I'm just honestly not into eye brighteners is what I'm finding. Like I don't need it to brighten, not really. Like I'm on the go, like I want one step, not two. And because this isn't like a concealer, I don't know what I was thinking when I bought it. I'm just not a huge fan of it. It doesn't do anything in my collection, so it's gonna go as well. This is a Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Concealer. Another one that's like medium to full coverage, super lightweight, doesn't crease under the eyes. This is such a good concealer. I don't think it's as good as my Dior Forever Skin Correct, but it's like right up there. One that I would like travel with and just use every single day. It's a really good concealer. So I'm gonna hold on to this one. I am gonna declutter my Flower Beauty Light Illusion one. It's on the older side, but plus, and it started to crease under my eyes and maybe I just didn't notice it right away. But yeah, I mean, it's definitely creasing now. So I'm just not into that. And because I have concealers now that are more full coverage that don't crease, this is gonna go. Another one that's going to go because it's older is the Flawless Fusion Ultra Longwear Concealer from Laura Mercier. Plus, this was a really yellow tone. So it's just really the wrong shade. It's on the older side. I never reach for it. It's time to go. Another full coverage one is the one from Pat McGrath. This is okay. Like, it's definitely more full coverage. It's definitely, like, getting up there. I think that I like my other, like, full coverage concealers just a little bit better than this one, but I think I'm gonna hold on to the Pat McGrath one for like one more season and then declutter it in the next go around because I think that it's just a little bit heavier of a formula than I like. So I'll hold on to it for one more round and then it'll go into the declutter. Another one that I have here from Dior is the Backstage Concealer. 
I like this. I think it's lighter weight. It doesn't provide as much coverage as the Dior um, Forever Skin Correct, but I think it's a really good one. I'm a fan of the Dior base products, powder, foundations, concealer. So I thought this was a good one. I really enjoy the backstage um, foundation or like it's a foundation. So I'm going to hold on to this one because I do like it. The LYS one is one that I'm on the fence about. Like I can't really remember. It's supposed to be a full coverage brightening concealer. I just cannot remember how I feel about it because it's obviously at the bottom and I just haven't used it that often recently. So I'm gonna pull this out more to the front and then use it some more and see if I wanna like keep it or not. I mean, for now I'm keeping it, but whether or not it continues to stay. So I'll hold on to it for now. One from Kosas used to be like my absolute favorite. It just runs yellow. I can't really remember how I feel about this one now in like comparison to some of my other ones. But like, if you can see, it's kind of a like shade that's not necessarily great for my fair skin. And so, I mean, it's a little bit finicky, right? Like I have to work a little bit more to make this look good. See how yellow toned it comes out? Hmm. I feel like it's time for this to go. Cause like I'm looking at my stack over there and like this is yellow. So, okay, bye. The final one here is the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer. Used to be my favorite. This is like nearly gone at this point. It's such a good like lightweight concealer. It never creases. It doesn't offer a whole lot of coverage to be honest. And so like it's great for light days. But I think that I want to try and use this up and I'm looking at some of my other ones now and not all of them like there's no one other than the Glossier one that really has like this kind of lightweight coverage. All these other ones have a little bit more coverage in this one. So I'm going to hold on to this one for a little while longer and see if I can try and use this up. I mean, I say that, but like, yeah, right. All right, let's put these away. Honestly, I feel so good that they all fit in here because they were just falling all over in the drawer here. So I'm gonna put them away. I did move the foundations up to the top of this desk and I'm gonna go through those separately. But for now, look at, look how beautiful those all fit. And yes, of course I have to dig into the bottom to find all of them, but like they're not toppling over. They're not spilling into the drawer. So happy about that. I do want to kind of briefly go over this drawer. This is where I keep my powders and my highlighters, like the powder highlighters. I just recently did like a declutter of my highlighters, so there's none in here that I want to get rid of, but I think it would be fun if I took them out and just showed them to you. I'm not going to talk about them in depth, but I think it would be fun to just like go through them so you can see what I have. The powders I'll just do right here. I have one from one size. This is actually the powder foundation, but I love this. This is the original Charlotte Tilbury airbrush powder and I love that. This is one from Hourglass. I do like this. It's a bit of a heavier powder for my dry skin so I don't love it but I'm gonna keep it. I have one from Sephora. This is the Micro Smooth powder. I actually really do like this. I think it's like buffing. It's just a lightweight formula. And then I have one from Rimmel which is the Stay Matte. This is relatively new to me and I really like it. I have the new Charlotte Tilbury Brightening Airbrush powder and I like this one and I'm going to hold on to it because it's newer but I prefer her original over this one. I have the banana powder from Maybelline. I like that one. Uh, let's see. This is one from Becca that's got to go. It's like the under eye brightener. It's just old so bye. Then I have like the Hydra Mist one from Becca. It's almost gone. It's old. It's got to go. And then the Laura Mercier just your classic translucent setting powder. I like it, but it's a little bit heavier. One that I don't love, which is newer to me that I don't want to declutter because it's newer, is the Say one. I'm gonna hold on to that. This is an e.l.f. like foundation, right? But I love it. <laughs> like I love it for setting. I will wear this on top of foundation and I don't think it's too heavy. So I'm gonna hold on to that one. Your good old Maybelline Fit Me powder. I like it, but I like the banana one better. I have one from Fendi. I guess I'm kind of on the fence. Like I shouldn't have gotten such a big one. I think she sells them in smaller sizes. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. And I do like this. I just think it's like more than I'll ever use. It's a heavier powder than I usually reach for these days, but I don't want to get rid of it just yet. I'm going to hold on to it. I have one of my holy grails back here. It's the Beauty Bakery Flower Setting Powder, and I have a backup of it back there. And then I have the Easy Bake one from Huda. It's just a small one. I do like it, but 
I don't think I like it over some of my other lighter weight ones. And then the final one that I have is one from Hourglass. Again, this is like this, like it's a little bit, these three are just a little bit heavy on me. So I'll use it when I'm trying to set like a dewier foundation, but I won't do it when I'm wearing like a satin foundation or a, or a satin matte or a matte foundation. I'll grab for these in like specific times. So I'm going to hold on to all of these and just get rid of these two powders. I knew that I was going to, but I wanted to show you everything. So now I'll just pull out the highlighters and we can go through those pretty quickly together. Like I said, I'm not decluttering any of them. I did forget to show you two of the like powders that I have. I have the Essence 16 hour cover and last powder foundation, which I think is a new release. Um, I'm still testing this one. So it was like in a different spot. And then the new house labs bio blurring like powder and again this is a newer release so i'm still testing this one out so it's a new one but i'm keeping both of those so let's move on into the highlighters now this one is a makeup palette it's just like a highlighter palette from touch and soul i think it's gorgeous i won't use these two shades but i use these and i kind of just swirl them together <laughs> it's just like so shiny and beautiful so i love that this is a trio from pat mcgrath and I don't like all of the shades, but this one is my absolute favorite. It has like a gold shift to it. Oh my gosh, it's so good. I just love it. Like I don't have anything else like this. And so I keep this palette because I don't use this one and I don't like a pink shift, but this gold shift is gorgeous. So I hold on to that one. I have one from Ace Beauté. This is the Glow Essentials Highlighter Palette. I actually think this is really good. I like the variety in here. Of course, I just use a couple of the shades, but they're all so beautiful. Like they have a really good kind of like natural glow to them. So I love this one. I have one here from Profusion. This is the Whipped Glow Mousse Highlighter in Sweet Whip. This is a pink one. I don't have very many pink ones. So I love that it's just this like wet looking pink highlighter. I have two here from ColourPop. They're super shock ones. There's one that is in Lunch Money, and then this one's in the, what is this one? Flexitarian. So Flexitarian's my favorite. Lunch Money is also beautiful, just not as like glisteny as Flexitarian is. I know swatching highlighters look so cool on camera, so I'm trying to do it so you can see, but I'll be here all day. <laughs> that one's Lunch Money, so that one's really nice. I have two here from Becca. And I think they're both champagne pop. Yeah, they're both champagne pop. I'm not going to get rid of them. They're powder products. They're just minis. I think that they'll last me a good amount of time. I think it's a, you know, just a, an OG formula, an OG shade. So I'm holding onto these. I mean, I'm holding onto all of them. I have one here from Milani, the Bake Highlighter in Dolce Perla. I think this is beautiful. I think it's a more powdery formula, but it's very nice on the skin. My camera is like not wanting to focus. It's gonna make me mad. The next one is Star Surfer. This is another one that's like pink, but it just doesn't look like as wet and as like shimmery as the Profusion ones. I have a Melt a Digital Dust Highlighter in Stargazer. I love this. I love them all. It's beautiful, very champagne colored. Another one that's pretty champagne colored. That's beautiful for the, from the drugstore, the Revlon Skin Lights. Oh my gosh, this one's even better than the one from Melt. Look at it, it's so powerful and pigmented. I love that one. Here's one from Wet n Wild. It's okay, like it's a creamier formula. I just don't think I reach for this one like over some of my other ones. It's just so inexpensive. It's nice, it just, I almost never reach for it anymore, but I'm still gonna hold on to it. This one is a new one from House Labs. It's This one is the Bio Radiant Gel in Sunstone. I think it looks like it would be too dark of a shade, but it actually works for my skin. So I do really like this one. There it is there. This one I just recently picked up. It's the Cookie Highlighter from Benefit. I think this is really good. Like I obviously slept on this for a really long time. So this is a really good product. It's just like this very, very light pinky shade, but it's so long lasting, really good. I have one from Ofra. This one's in Glazed Donut. It's more white, but you know, depending upon what eye makeup you're wearing or blush you're wearing, it's nice. I have a mini here from Jaclyn Cosmetics. This one is the mini highlighter in Iced. Really like this, really like this formula. It's very, very soft when you put your finger in it. I have one from Stila. This one's fairly new to me. This is in Kitten. This is called the Heaven's Hue Highlighter. It's like a putty formula, but it's a pinky one. I love it. Look at that little like shift. Nice. This might be unpopular opinion, but this is the Iced Out Highlighter from Anastasia. 
it's yellow toned, but like, you know, I showed you my Pat McGrath one. I really like when they have like this yellow shift to it. I think that's so beautiful on like my fair skin and atop some of my, I don't know, maybe more orange blushes. So I really, really liked this one. Just a little mini from Jouer. It's just a lighter like shift to it, but it's just really beautiful and like sophisticated. This one from Jaclyn Cosmetics is glazed out. This is like a putty highlighter, but I really like it. It reminds me of like the Stila one, but this one just has a little bit more impact like when you put it on your cheeks than the Stila one does. That's a good one. This one is from the Sephora collection. This is the Golden Hour Highlighter Duo. It has one that they call like low impact, a low beam and high beam. And I really like this concept. So this one is more like low beam and like more muted than the high beam one. So it's like good for natural, like every day. But if you want something more punchy, you would like use this high beam one. And I like the concept of like having both. My all time favorite highlighters, I have two of them. One is in pink glow and the other one is in peach glow. These are my favorite. Like they're just so sophisticated and they last on the cheeks for such a long time without looking like glittery. I love them. Pink Glow, Peach Glow, oof, my favorite. The next one I have is from Revolution Pro. This is the Luster Highlighter, and this one is in White Rose. It's in the shape of a rose, and it's a pretty powdery formula, but it's just, oof, it's so beautiful when it's on the cheeks. Look at that. <laughs> but I really like this, plus I like the packaging. I have one here from Nabla. This is the Skin Glazing Glass Skin Finish Glow Powder. Wow. In the shade Ozone. Again, just like a, a really good one. One here from M Cosmetics. This one is the Sunscape Highlighter in Clarity. I love M Cosmetics powder products. They're really powdery, like they're almost hollow, but I love the finish of them. This one's like a bit of a deeper shade, but I still like it. This is one from House Labs. This is the Tucci Gel Highlighter. This is before she reformulated and went into Sephora. This was like her last launch, which was like the Casa Gaga collection. And this shade's just a little bit too dark for me, but I still like, I still like it. Like I'll use it with an orangey blush because it's just such a good highlighter. So I'm not getting rid of that one. And then the Essence Pure Nude one, I almost thought about decluttering, even though this is a fairly new product to me. I just don't love like the shade and how like natural it is. I don't know. It's just maybe too natural for me. And then the last one is from Laura Mercier. This is the Celestial Light Translucent Powder. Technically this is like a face powder and not a highlighter, but when I bought it, I was like, no, it's a highlighter. Like it's going to be a highlighter for me because it's way too glowy to be a face powder. So that's how I use it. And it's just a really, really like natural. Look at that. How could that not be a highlighter? <laughs> So I use it as a powder highlighter, but it's just so much product. But look how like beautiful and natural and airbrush that looks. So I love this. Keep this in my highlighters. Okay, let's put these back. Okay, so now that we've done that drawer, what I keep down here is all of my powder bronzers and blushes. I did recently just go through and declutter all this. So I will take these out and show these to you, but I'm not gonna swatch everything. I'll just kind of go through them briefly and then we will move on into the other side of the drawer over here where I keep a bunch of other stuff. So let's get to pulling this stuff out. Okay, here are all the bronzers. I actually am taking a look at some of these and there are some that I'm gonna declutter because I don't know, I just think it's time. I have too many. There are a couple that don't fit in these two containers and it's overflowing in that drawer anyway. So I'll show you, I'll just go through them and then I'll declutter as I go. But I am going to get rid of this Milani Baked Bronzer one. It's in the shade Glow. It's just too glowy for me. I'll swatch you the ones that I'm going to declutter just so you can see kind of why I am. But like, it's not a bronzer. Like, it's a it's a dark highlighter. And so the luminosity in here is just too intense 
for a bronzer for me so i just don't really love it and i'm a huge fan of milani baked powder products this just it wasn't it for me not for my preferences uh, the next one I have is the Skin Mimetic Micro Suede Bronzer in the shade Lunar from Make Beauty. Love that. Love this one from Sicily. Super radiant, like Bake Chalet formula. This one doesn't come in a shade. It's just one shade. So here is what it is on the back. I love this one. Really expensive product. The Tentastic Omega Bronzer from Marc Jacobs. I love this. I know they're gone, but I won't get rid of it. I have one from Nabla. This is the Skin Bronzing Bronzer in the shade Ambra. I have the one from Gucci. I got this in shade 02, so it's a little bit too dark for me, but I don't want to get rid of it because it was pretty expensive, and I do try to make like it work for me by using a light hand. I have one of the Candy Shop or donut shop ones from physicians formula this one was the butter donut bronzer in sprinkles it is a pretty good one pretty neutral tone this is a trio that's a couple years old from tarte it's the amazonian clay cheek wardrobe and on the bottom is the bronzer as you can see i love this one i have featured on my channel a couple of times recently i took it with me for travel i used it quite a bit it has a really really slight shimmer to it so it's gorgeous i have one here from believe beauty this is the sunstruck marbleize bronzer this one's in the shade sun kissed honey this is actually i think the like second lightest shade but oh my goodness the shift on this it's so beautiful it has like just a slight like shimmer to it it's just a really really pretty bronzer i like that one this is technically a contour it's the colorful contour from the sephora collection right now i think this is even sold out after the vib sale this is the l'oreal infallible 24 hour fresh wear bronzer in the shade bear one of my all-time favorite bronzers is the Too faced milk chocolate in the shade soleil I don't even think you can get this packaging anymore. Like, I think the milk chocolate one is maybe gone. I'm not exactly sure, but I looked on their website recently and it wasn't identical to this. Something similar, but not the same product. So I'm definitely holding on to that and it seems to be working just fine. This is the Cover FX, the monochromatic bronzer duo in a matte and a shimmer side. I love this one. Another great drugstore is the Heatwave Luminous Bronzer for Flower Beauty. This one has like a reddish undertone, a slight shimmer to it. I love this. This one's in the shade Sunrise. Like it's this fat sticker on the back of it from CVS. Like why do drugstores do that? I don't know. This is the Milani Silky Matte Bronzer in the shade Sunlight. I love this. This is my favorite bronzer, which is the L'Oreal True Match Lumi Bronze It. Oh, so soft, such a neutral tone. And it has that slight sheen to it. This is for face and body. This is the Mar Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Perfector in the shade Light. Technically, maybe not a bronzer, but that is how I use this. This is one you can't get anymore. This is another one from Becca of my Becca products. But this is the Sunlit Bronzer in the shade Bali Sands. This is such a good one. Like it has just a slight sheen to it, a really good neutral tone. Sorry, they don't have that anymore. This is the Balm Desert Bronzer and Blush. Like it's meant to be for both and so it has this like really red undertone oh so good this is again not a shade because this is like the only one that they make of this so it's just the one shade this is one from glowish the soft radiance bronzing powder in zero one light i like this marbleized bronzer but i think that the believe beauty the marbleized one is better than this this is one from melt this is a new release. This is their Ultra Matte Bronzer in the shade Santa Barbara. It's a little bit too dark and a little bit too warm, but it's new, so I don't want to get rid of it. This is one of the primer infused bronzers from Buxom. It's called Staycation Vibes. It's in Rooftop Tan. It's good. I have this one from Perfusion. It's the Instant Summer Mango and Cocoa Butter Infused Bronzer, and this one's in the shade Toasted. It's a little bit warm, so it's good for like the spring and summertime, but I'm just not reaching for it right now, even though I did just re recently purchase that. I have a little mini NARS Laguna. A little bit too dark, but I love the formula, so I try and go in with a light hand. The LYS Bronzer. The um, No Limits Matte Bronzer in the shade Motivate. This one always winds up patchy on me because it's like this like extra powdery formula. I can't figure out why it's patchy. I even have the LYS Bronzer Brush and it's still patchy. I'm, I'm just going to declutter this one because I, I have so many. Like I never reach for this because it wound up patchy on me like three times. So no. I have one from Iconic London that's also going to go. 
not necessarily a formula issue, but this one was sent to me in a boxy charm and it's medium bronze and it's just too deep for me. This one is the um, bronzing duo from Jouer. This one's for light to medium, but it's just too light. Like this shade was way too light, didn't show up, and then this one just looked way too warm on my skin. And I know that they have like, different duo shades, and so they do have like darker ones for this that I might think about picking up, but like the formula didn't knock my socks off and I have a lot of bronzer. So I'm gonna declutter this cause it never works for me. And I thought about holding on to it. I just, there's no need to. I am gonna get rid of this one from Jaclyn Cosmetics. This is her bronze and plushing duo. This one's in Lilac Love and Top Tan. So it's a duo with the blush and the bronzer. The bronzer is just too light. And um, I ended up not loving this pink. Like this is just a baby doll pink that I just never reach for. So I'm a dum dum and bought this that doesn't really work for my skin tone. So it's so big and clunky um, <laughs> and I never reach for it. So I'm gonna give it away. I'm gonna declutter it. Okay, here are all the blushes. I know I already said that I'm not getting rid of any, so I don't think I will. I did forget one bronzer that I have. This is a new one to me. This is the Rimmel Natural Bronzer. It actually looks really, really warm, but I'm still testing this out. I've only used it once, so I'm gonna continue testing it because not all the time does like what is in the pan always represent how it translates to your cheek. So I'm gonna hold on to that one for now on the bronzers. But for the blushes, I'll show you these briefly. This is the Gucci Luminous Matte Bronzer. This one is in the shade Rosy Beige. I'm a huge, huge fan of this. I love the formula. This one that I'm not really sold on, this is the Dior Backstage Rosy Glow. It's just a shade that I thought I might like, but it's just too pinky for me. So I hold it for comparison since because it was expensive and it's super popular, but that's the only reason I don't really enjoy the color. I have a new one here, a new launch from Make Beauty. This is the Skin Mimetic Micro Suede Blush in Mystic Mauve. I love the blush, I love the shade. This is a good one. I have two from M Cosmetics. One is the Heaven's Glow Blush in Venetian Rose, one of my favorite formulas, super pigmented blush. And then I have this shade, which is the Faded Clementine Release. Love this, so, so pigmented. I have one from MAC that I'm still testing out. It's just one of their mineral blushes. It's the, yeah, mineral blush in Sweet Enough. Such a good mauve shade, super pigmented. Just a really, really good formula. Just a good, I don't know, workhorse formula. One that I haven't even tried yet is the Mosaic Blush from Essence. I don't know what shade this is in. Goodness gracious, you see what CVS does here? I don't know, the berry something is all I'm getting out of it but I haven't tried this yet, so this one was on my vanity. I have one here from Catkin. Oh, talk about a pigmented formula. This one is so pigmented with like a shimmer to it. Oh, so beautiful. I have one from Charlotte Tilbury that's the Cheek to Chic in Pillow Talk. I love this one. Really good formula, a pop of shimmer. I like it, really pigmented. One of my favorite blush formulas is the Laura Mercier. These are the blush color infusions. This one's in Cur Royale. It's just so unique and it actually is really good for the fall. So I've held on to this one, even though it's like a purpley color. I have another one from her that's in the shade Chai, such a neutral, like good, good neutral shade. Love that. I have two from Milani. This one, the, like the lettering is worn off. It's the Big Power Blush in Luminoso. It's a classic, it's kind of orangey. I've had this in my collection for a while. It's like one of the only blushes I used to ever use. And then I have one in Dolce Pink. It's kind of overly pink for me, but I do like the shimmer and like the gold shift, so I hold on to it. I have one from Physicians Formula. Ooh, this one's like, it's definitely older. This one you can't even get anymore. It's the Mineral Glow Pearls Blush in Natural Pearl. They sell something now that's like similar, like it's like a pearl impression, but like it's not exactly this product. They just don't even make it. It's on the older side. I don't know, should I declutter this? Will I miss it? I don't know, let me try this out a few more times and see if I want it to stay. 
This one was another one of those launches from House Labs from the Casa Gaga collection. It's called the Tutti Gel Powder All Over Rouge and it's in the shade Rossini. It's again like a shade that I just don't reach for that often, but I haven't used it that much. Like since I got it, I'm gonna hold on to it. Two here from Buxom, the Primer Infused Blushes. Love these. This, this one's in the shade Dolly and this one is in Seychelles. These are the Wanderlust Primer Infused Blushes. Oh my gosh, favorite formula, whole world right there. One from Bare Minerals, it's the Gen Nude Call Me Blush. I love this formula. Really pigmented, super no hassle product. Really good one from Bare Minerals. And then I have one from Sephora, it's the Colorful Matte Blush. I don't know, just an orange shade in Love Child. I think that's a good formula. I love the Bare Minerals Blonzer. Apparently someone on one of my videos said this was like the limited edition packaging before they decided to put it in their permanent line and then made it black packaging. So. That's what I have is like the first launch, which I guess they initially thought was gonna be limited edition. This one is in Kiss of Copper. I have one tiny one here from Beauty Bakery. It's the Bite Size Snackaroons blush in the shade Freshly Baked. It's such a dark color. Like, I don't know, do I use this? I have a hard time with blushes. Like, I just love blushes so much. <laughs> it's like my second or first favorite beauty product besides like foundation. I just don't know. I hold on to too many, but I think I'm gonna keep that for now. I have one of the Clinique Cheek Pops in Nude Pop. Really interesting formula on these. It's like like baked, but it has like a lot of shimmer to it and just a muted undertone. It's really interesting, but very beautiful. I have one here from CC. This is from their Palace Identity Collection. It's the Peony Blush in B01. So beautiful, so pigmented. One here from Patrick Ta. This is the Double Take Cream and Powder Blush in Do We Know Her. It's a newer product to me. I just recently bought this. Like I never purchased it when it was a new release, but I think it's a beautiful color and I like the formula on these. I have two from that same set I was showing you before with the bronzer from Tarte, the Cheek Wardrobe. These two are blushes, but I use this one as a highlighter. Even though it's dark, it doesn't have like a huge base to it. And so it just gives like a really good, like almost purple shift to the skin. It's so beautiful, but these blushes are actually really nice. And so I keep them in my blush collection. If I was gonna declutter any of them, it would be this one, but I like this shimmery blush and I like this shade. It's this one that I don't like love because it's a little bit too pink for me. I have the NARS Orgasm X, so it's a little bit, deeper and it has a pretty good shimmer to it. Such a beautiful shade. I have one here from Hourglass. It's one of their ambient lighting blushes. I love these. This one's in the shade Mood Exposure. Super pigmented, really long lasting formula. Really good on that. I have one of the Jaclyn Cosmetics like loose powder blushes. This one's in Love Language. This is from the Bougie Rouge collection. Oh my gosh. It's so much product and it would last me so long. It's my only loose powder blush that I have in my collection as you can see but I really like the shade and um, it almost stains your cheeks. It's just so pigmented. And the final one is from One Size. This is the Cheek Clamper 3D Blush Trio in Very That. I think this is great. It has a cream, um, a matte finish, and then a shimmer finish. I love this color and I like the concept of having like three different finishes in one. Okay, I forgot to put the highlighting palettes away in the drawer. So let's do that. And now let's see if we can get Okay, I just have a small stack of face palettes. I think I may be getting rid of one, but not entirely sure. It would be this one, if anything. This was a limited edition, like holiday release last year from Laura Mercier. This was the first ball cheek palette. I just didn't think this was that great. Like it's a 
basic formula. Like it's just not great for anything. Like the pans are really small. The highlighters were just meh. Like, I don't know. I just didn't love this. It's just been sitting here. I basically never use it. I was entirely unimpressed. You know what? It kind of just takes up space. I, I'm going to get rid of it. One that I'm for sure not getting rid of, even though it's one of the Becca products, is the Chloe and Malika like collab with Becca. It comes with a bronzer, two blushes, and a highlighter. And I think this formula is so good and super pigmented. I love this. And because they're powder products, I think they'll last a little bit longer. So I like this and I want to hold on to that. This is a new release from Charlotte Tilbury. This was her new face palette, Pillow Talk Beautifying Face Palette with two blushes and then two highlighters. I actually really like this. I think it's a really good baked formula. I have a new holiday release from NARS. This was the Rising Star Cheek Palette. One of my favorite cheek palettes in my collection. Such a good, good variety. And then you get like one shimmer finish, but like the tones of the blushes or the colors are just so diverse, like way better than some of my other ones in terms of like, hey, look, you, could, you have a palette that could really work for all skin tones. Huge fan of this formula, love it. I have one from Hourglass that's about two years old at this point, and I know they've had a lot of new releases, but I don't need more, because I have like, you know, a blush, a highlighter, bronzers, and like a face powder, or one is a highlighter and one is a face powder. I don't know which one I'm pointing to at this point. I think this is the face powder, highlighter, bronzer, and two blushes. I think this one's just fine. The Lighting Edit Universe. It actually might've been like last year that it released or the year before. I can't remember, but I do like this. I have one from the Bougie Rouge collection from Jacqueline Cosmetics, this one, Rouge Affair. And it's a pretty bright palette, but the formula is really, really nice on this. I need to give this more love. It has quite a variety of like finishes. Some of these are satin and this one's like a shimmer. I don't know, I just need to use this again like next spring and summer and decide whether or not I wanna keep it because it's not my favorite like cheek palette in my collection. It's okay, but like honestly, I'll use these two shades. Like the rest of it, I just, I won't. And I know she had different versions and maybe I screwed up and picked up this, but I was looking at it with the pictures online and I usually only maybe these three shades. So I don't know, we'll give it one more year. This is one that I love. It's the Lunar Beauty Nude Prism Blush. I like most of these blushes with the exception of this one. So beautiful, gorgeous, great formula. The final one that I have here is from Ofra. This came in a BoxyCharm. Love all these shades. This one is super unique in my collection. So I really like this. I think that they're a pretty pigmented, long lasting formula. So it's a good one. Okay, I forgot to put these face palettes away. And the ones that have blushes and bronzers, I put in this drawer. So that is completed. Okay guys, I'm still makeup free, still hanging out in my PJs, but I think I'm gonna call this part one because I went through about half, I would say, of my collection and I can already tell that this video is getting pretty long as it were. So I think I wanna keep the rest for part two and then potentially do like a part three for foundations because I'm gonna do something a little bit different with those. So I mean like what we've got going here is just like the little pile that I've started from what I've decluttered so far. I don't know if there'll be a whole lot more to declutter the liquid and cream products, but who knows? You never know. As I start going through things, I think, hmm, let's make some room. So I'm gonna call it a part one. So I appreciate you guys sticking in there for today's video. If you're interested in seeing part two, consider subscribing to my channel. I hope you hit that like button and I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye.